Welcome to St. Paul's Wimbledon Park service of evening prayer. Thursday, 2nd of April. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Let, let your ways be known upon earth, your saving power among the nations. Blessed are you, Lord God of our salvation. To you be glory and praise forever. As we behold your Son enthroned on the cross, stir up in us the fire of your love, that we may be cleansed from all our sins and walk with you in newness of life, singing the praise of him who died for us and for our salvation. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. Jesus, Savior of the world, come to us in your mercy. We look to you to save and help us. By your cross and your life laid down, you set your people free. We look to you to save and help us. When they were ready to perish, you saved your disciples. We look to you to come to our help. In the greatness of your mercy, loose us from our chains. Forgive the sins of all your people. Make yourself known as our Savior and mighty Deliverer. Save and help us that we may praise you. Come now and dwell with us, Lord Jesus Christ. Hear our prayer and be with us always. And when you come in your glory, make us to be one with you and to share the life of your kingdom. Amen. That this evening may be holy, good, and peaceful, let us pray with one heart and mind. As our evening prayer rises before you, O God, so may your mercy come down upon us to cleanse our hearts and set us free to sing your praise now and forever. Amen. The psalm this evening is Psalm 42. As the deer longs for the water brooks, so longs my soul for you, O God. My soul is a thirst for God, even for the living God. When shall I come before the presence of God? My tears have been my bread day and night, while all day long they say to me, Where is now your God? Now when I think on these things, I pour out my soul. How I went with the multitude and led the procession to the house of God. With a voice of praise and thanksgiving among those who kept holy day. Why are you so full of heaviness, O my soul? And why are you so disquieted within me? O oh, put your trust in God, for I will yet give him thanks, who is the help of my countenance and my God. My soul is heavy within me, therefore I will remember you from the land of Jordan, and from Hermon and the hill of Mizar. Deep calls to deep in the thunder of your waterfalls. All your breakers and waves have gone over me. The Lord will grant his loving kindness in the daytime. Through the night his song will be with me, a prayer to the God of my life. I say to God, my rock, why have you forgotten me? And why go I so heavily while the enemy oppresses me? As they crush my bones, my enemies mock me. While all the day long they say to me, Where is now your God? Why are you so full of heaviness, O my soul? And why are you so disquieted within me? O put your trust in God, for I will yet give him thanks, who is the help of my countenance and my God. Come, Creator Spirit, source of life, Sustain us when our hearts are heavy and our wells have run dry. For you are the Father's gift, with him who is our living water, Jesus Christ our Lord. Glory to the Father and to the Son 
and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Our first reading comes from the book of Jeremiah, chapter 23, beginning with the ninth verse. Concerning the prophets, my heart is crushed within me, all my bones shake. I have become like a drunkard, like one overcome by wine, because of the Lord and because of his holy words. For the land is full of adulterers, because of the curse the land mourns, and the pastures of the wilderness are dried up. Their course has been evil, and their might is not right. Both prophet and priest are ungodly. Even in my house I have found their wickedness, says the Lord. Therefore, their way shall be to them like slippery paths in the darkness, into which they shall be driven and fall. For I will bring disaster upon them in the year of their punishment, says the Lord. And the prophets of Samaria, I saw a disgusting thing. They prophesied by Baal and led my people Israel astray. But in the prophets, but in the prophets of Jerusalem, I have seen a more shocking thing. They commit adultery and walk in lies. They strengthen the hands of evildoers so that no one turns from wickedness. All of them have become like Saddam to me and its inhabitants like Gomorrah. Therefore, says the Lord of hosts concerning the prophets, I'm going to make them eat wormwood, wormwood and give them poisoned water to drink. For from the prophets of Jerusalem, ungodliness has spread throughout the land. Thus says the Lord of hosts, Do not listen to the words of the prophets who prophesy to you. They are deluding you. They speak visions of their own minds, not from the, the mouth of the Lord. They keep saying to those who despise the word of the Lord, It shall be well with you. And to all who stubbornly follow their own stubborn hearts, they say, No calamity shall come upon you. For who has stood on the in the counsel of the Lord, so as to see and to hear his word? Who has given heed to his word, so as to proclaim it? Look, the storm of the Lord. Wrath has gone forth, a whirling tempest, who will burst upon the head of the wicked. The anger of the Lord will not turn back until he has executed and accomplished his in the intents of his mind. In the latter days you will understand it clearly. I did not send the prophets, yet they ran. I did not speak to them, yet they prophesied. But if they had stood in my counsel, when they would have proclaimed my word to my people, and they would have turned to turn them from their evil way, and from their evil of the from the evil of their doings. I am a God nearby, says the Lord and not a go God far off. Who can hide in secret places so that I cannot see them, says the Lord. Do I not fill heaven and earth, says the Lord. I have heard what the prophets have said who prophesy lies in my name, saying, I have dreamed, I have dreamed. How long? Will the hearts of the prophets ever turn back? Those who prophesy lies and who prophesy the deceit of their own heart? They plan to make my people forget my name by their dreams, and they tell one another, just as their ancestors forgot my name for Baal. Let the prophet who has a dream tell the dream, but let the one who has my word speak my word faithfully. What has straw in common with, in common with wheat, says the Lord? Is not my word like fire, says the Lord, and like a hammer that breaks a rock into pieces? See, therefore, I am against the prophets, says the Lord, who steal my words from one another. See, I am against the prophets, says the Lord, who use their own tongues and say, says the Lord. See, I am against those who prophesy lying dreams, says the Lord, and those who tell him, and, and who tell them, and who lead my, my people astray by their lies and their recklessness, when I did not send them or appoint them. So they do not profit this people at all, says the Lord. This is the end of the first reading. The Canticle. At the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow, 
Jesus Christ was in the form of God, but he did not cling to equality with God. He emptied himself, taking the form of a servant, and was born in our human likeness. Being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even death on a cross. Therefore God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name above every name, so that the name of Jesus every knee should bow, in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. At the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. The second reading comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 12, beginning with the 12th verse. The next day the great crowd that had come to the festival heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem. So they took branches of palm trees and went out to meet him, shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord, the King of Israel. Jesus found a young donkey and sat on it, as it is written, Do not be afraid, daughter of Zion. Look, your king is coming, sitting on a donkey, donkey's coat. His disciples did not understand these things at first, but when Jesus was glorified, then they remembered that these things had been written of him and had been done to him. So the crowd that had been with him when he called Lazarus out of the tomb and raised him from the dead continued to testify. It was also because they heard that he had performed this sign that the crowd went to meet him. The Pharisees then said to one another, You see? You can do nothing. Look, the world has gone after him. In the responsory. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. By your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. Christ committed no sin. No guile was found on his lips. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. He himself bore our sins in his body on the tree that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. By your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. By his wounds, you have been healed. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. By your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. In the Magnificat, God's love for us is revealed in that while we, we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. He has looked with favor on his lowly servant. From this day, all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm and has scattered the proud in their conceit, casting down the mighty from their thrones and lifting up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He's come to the aid of his servant Israel to remember his promise of mercy, the promise made to our ancestors, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. God's love for us is revealed in that, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. We come to our time of intercessions. We take a moment first to recall the day and offer our prayers of thanksgiving quietly to God. We now pray for the world, the church, for individuals and their needs. 
Hear our prayers, O Lord our God. Govern and direct your holy church. Fill it with love and truth and grant it that unity which is your will. We give thanks for ministers throughout the world. For our Archbishop, Justin Welby. For our bishops, Christopher and Richard. For ministers throughout the world, including our brothers and sisters of other Christian churches, for the Pope and all who serve with him. We pray for all people of goodwill. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give us boldness to preach the gospel in all the world and to make disciples of all the nations. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Enlighten Christopher, our bishop, and all who minister with knowledge and understanding, that by their teaching and their lives they may proclaim your word. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give your people grace to hear and receive your word and to bring forth the fruit of the Spirit. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bring into the way of truth all who have erred and are deceived. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Strengthen those who stand, comfort and help the faint-hearted, raise up the fallen. And finally, beat down the devil under our feet. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide the leaders of the nations into ways of peace and justice, compassion and solidarity. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guard and strengthen your servant Elizabeth, our Queen, that she may put her trust in you and seek your honour and glory. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Bless those who administer the law, that they may uphold justice, honesty, and truth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give us the will to use the resources of the earth to your glory and for the good of all creation. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Bless and keep all your people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all who are on the front line, whether in hospital, care homes, pharmacies, the police, first responders, all who are caring and offering themselves for the sake of others. Grant them strength and preserve and protect them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bring your joy into all families. Strengthen and deliver those in childbirth. Watch over children and guide the young. Bring reconciliation to those in discord and peace to those in stress. Lord, in your mercy, 
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We'll take a moment to pray silently now, offering our own concerns. We pray the prayer in lockdown, written by the Dean of Southwark Cathedral. The doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked. Ever-present God, be with us in our isolation, be close to us in our distancing, be healing in our sickness, be joy in our sadness, be light in our darkness, be wisdom in our confusion, be all that is familiar when all is unfamiliar, that when the doors are when the doors reopen, we may with the zeal of Pentecost inhabit our communities and speak of your goodness to an emerging world. For the sake of Jesus Christ. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour. Jesus Christ. Amen. Bringing all of our prayers together in the words of the Collect. Most merciful God, who by the death and resurrection of your Son Jesus Christ delivered and saved the world, grant that by faith in him who suffered on the cross we may triumph in the power of his victory. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Standing at the foot of the cross as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. May Christ, who bore our sins on the cross, set us free to serve him with joy. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.